What's up everyone, my name is Ale, welcome back to my world of stocks. So once in a while, I like to review the stock portfolios of some famous investors by taking their top 10 largest holdings and ranking them from best down to worst, while I also give my own personal opinion on each one of those stocks as we go through the list. And for today's video, I can't think of perhaps a more controversial investor right now than Bill Gates, who I'm not gonna give any kind of political opinion on, this isn't a political or social related channel, but depending on who you ask, Bill Gates is either a hero or a villain, and depending on various different things that are going on in the world right now. Either way though, one thing that I think that we can all agree on is that Bill Gates is incredibly rich and his uh, foundation, the Gates Foundation, has a very large amount of money and influence over the stock market. So that's what I'm interested in exploring today, taking a closer look at what stocks he's investing in and seeing if maybe there's anything in there of value that I would like to invest in myself. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run through the list. We're gonna rank them from best to worst. I'm gonna do a rapid fire style, give my quick opinion on each stock as we go through the list, let you know if I plan to buy any of these stocks myself too. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Hit that like button if you guys enjoy this. But let's go ahead and jump straight into it. Okay, so as of right now, Bill Gates has an estimated net worth of over $100 billion, making him the fourth reportedly richest person in the world, and his investment trust that we'll be looking at today, known as the Gates Foundation, holds over $23 billion worth of stocks, with 22 in total, although to keep this video within a reasonable time limit, we'll just be looking at the top 10 largest. And kicking things off here with stock number 10, that's going to be United Parcel service, otherwise known as UPS, ticker symbol UPS, at just under 2% of his portfolio and worth over $400 million. And this is of course one of the world's largest package delivery companies. You've probably uh, had something delivered from them yourself, especially recently because of the global health issue and with more people staying home and shopping online and of course the holidays. But overall, just looking at global logistics as an entire kind of market, this is a gigantic market that is already worth over $8 trillion. Now, obviously, UPS only operates in small pieces of that market, and there's the growing threat of competitors like Amazon, who has been going deeper into logistics in recent years, but UPS has actually done a great job of depending less on Amazon for their deliveries and targeting smaller businesses instead that rely on UPS for all of their shipments. And that strategy has actually led to a lot of success for them, especially during the global health issue, where they saw their revenue soar by 14% in both 2020 and 2021. That's pretty good. Unfortunately, that high growth is expected to fall back down to just 4% this year. And then when uh, looking at at the stock, I would argue that most of those gains during the global health issue, that's probably been priced into the stock, at least for the most part as of right now, as it is now trading near an all-time high. Still, even at these prices, the valuation is actually pretty reasonable with a PEG ratio of less than one. Anytime it's less than one, that's pretty good. And a for, uh, forward P ratios that are cheaper than the sector as well. Plus, they even pay a nice little dividend of about 2% with a low payout ratio and 12 solid years of growth. And while the logistics market is not without competition, it is at least fairly hard to break into just because of all the capital that is required. And because UPS already has such a large network built out with over half a million employees, operations in more than 200 countries, and over $80 billion in sales in just 2020 alone, I'd imagine that they're going to remain one of the largest players in the market for a long Long time to come. I don't think that the stock has a lot more room to run at this time, and that's why I won't be buying it myself. But just the large market dominance, along with that nice little dividend, does make it understandable why others would want to hold it. And for that reason, I'll put them right around the middle of the pack for now at number five, and I'll readjust it later as we go through the list. All right, now moving on to stock number nine, that actually would have been Kansas City Southern, ticker symbol KSU, which is a railway company, but they just got acquired by Canadian Pacific, which is a larger rail company, and existing Kansas City shareholders got cash and stock in Canadian Pacific, so I'll just talk about them instead. And in Canadian Pacific's case, there's not really much to say here. It's a typical railway stock, which are kind of boring to me, but at least the acquisition is going to give them the first ever single line railway connecting Canada, the United States, and Mexico, and that should help 
uh, help them get some otherwise pretty rare growth. In fact, in 2020, they actually had a revenue decline, and now that's expected to recover by about 7% growth in each of the following years. A lot of that has already been priced into the stock since it's fairly close to an all-time high, and the dividend at just 0.8% is too small to make up for how boring of a business they have, along with even a pretty mediocre valuation that is about the same as the rest of the sector. So I won't be buying this stock myself and because UPS looks a lot more attractive to me on virtually every metric we could look at, especially the dividend, I'll go ahead and put <clears throat> Canadian Pacific a bit behind them for now at the number seven spot. Okay, now coming in at stock number eight, that's going to be Crown Castle, ticker symbol CCI, at over 3% of his portfolio and worth close to $800 million. And if you've never heard of them, they're actually a rate or a real estate investment trust. Basically, that's a company that owns and manages real estate. But the interesting thing about Crown Castle is that they manage and provide cell towers and various locations for internet connectivity, including tens of thousands of different cell towers, as well as tens of thousands of miles of fiber, all of which is obviously going to be a growing market over the long term. <clears throat> excuse me, with the rise of 5G, the heavy use of smartphones, the emerging internet of things, the rise of artificial intel intelligence, autonomous vehicles, all of these different things rely heavily on cell towers and data usage, and that makes their business very dependable long-term with revenue growth rates of usually around 7% or more per year, which is you know pretty good. It's also allowed them to pay a super nice dividend of over 3%. That's also pretty good. I know that payout ratio looks dangerously high at 92%, but rates are actually required to pay out more than 90% of their earnings in order to qualify for special benefits. The stock is a bit high already after more than doubling in the past five years, leaving the valuation a little more expensive than the rest of the sector. But when you combine the stable business with the nice dividend, I think that alone makes this an interesting stock to own. It's a little too low growth for me personally, but I'd still rank them higher than the rest of the stocks that we've seen so far. So I'll put them just slightly ahead of UPS at number four for now. All right, next up at number seven, it is going to be the almighty Microsoft, ticker symbol MSFT, at over 3.5% of his portfolio and worth over $800 million. And I'm sure you guys know how I'm going to rank this one because it's already my number one largest stock in my own portfolio. And for a long time, it's been my absolute favorite stock in the market. That's because Microsoft has one of the most reliable businesses with either complete dominance or at least very large market share in cloud with Azure, gaming with Xbox, operating systems with Windows, work product productivity with Office, work networking with LinkedIn, coding development with GitHub, the list just goes on and on. And that's led to unbelievable financials with almost $170 billion in sales and over 60 billion of that going straight to the bottom line in just the past year alone. And they are still expected to somehow grow sales by over 17% this year and another 14% next year as well. That is pretty freaking crazy, guys. Unfortunately, this dominance means that the stock rarely ever dips as it is now up close to 400% over the past five years. But I don't really care. This is a stock that is always a buy on even the smallest of dips and it's easily taking the number one spot on my list. All right, next up is gonna be Ecolab, ticker symbol ECL, at almost 4% percent of his portfolio and worth over 900 million dollars and this is a company that is actually a bit more well known than you might think especially among retail and various businesses because they're a market leader in selling sanitation and various cleaning products and services to those companies in fact the next time that you're in a store's bathroom check the label of that soap uh, it might actually say Ecolab on it since they already operate in over 170 different countries around the world across a huge variety of markets and industries. And with how much attention diseases and viruses get these days, this might actually be a pretty good business to have right now and even well into the future. For some really weird reason though, sales actually dropped in 2020 by about 6% probably because of the lockdowns and businesses being closed down, but sales are at least recovering by close to 10% in each of the two years after as the economy opens back up. The issue I have with Ecolab though is that despite this stock only being up by about 80% in the past five years and currently sitting 
in the bottom half of its 52 week range, their valuation is actually sky high with a non gap forward P ratio of over 46 that is more than 200% higher than the rest of the sector. And even their dividend is still less than a 1% yield despite being grown every year for the past nearly three decades in a row. It's an interesting business that I don't think is ever going away, but the valuation is way too high, the dividend is way too low, and that's despite the stock already being very slow moving. So overall, I'd say Ecolab is mediocre at best, and for that reason, I gotta put them behind UPS at number six. All right, moving on now to stock number five, that's going to be the very popular retail chain that you very likely shopped at yourself known as Walmart, ticker symbol WMT, at over 4% of his portfolio and worth close to $1 billion. And when we talk about dominance, aside from Amazon, Walmart is way up there in retail with not very many threats to compete with, especially in terms of a physical footprint as well as online shopping. With a total of about 10,500 physical stores across 24 different countries with over 2 million employees, and those physical stores are oftentimes giant, almost warehouse like in size that benefit from selling just about anything that you might need. I remember I went to Walmart the other day and I spent so much time in there because they literally just had everything that I needed to buy. So I spent you know a ton of time going through every aisle and just finding things that I didn't even know I needed, but I ended up buying. Anyway, that's not the point. Uh, when looking at e-commerce, even with online shopping, Walmart does a pretty good job competing there too, thanks to a combination of both an online and physical presence. Around 90% of the US population lives within 10 miles of a Walmart store, and that really helps with deliveries as well as in-store pickup and even returns. So far, it's a formula that has been working out very well as their walmart.com website already sees about 100 million unique visitors each month and continues to grow, especially thanks to the global health issue where more people stayed home and ordered online, helping their online sales more than double since 2020. That's pretty crazy. Still, overall revenue is not likely to grow much in the future just because of how massively large they already are. Last year, they did over half a trillion dollars in sales, which is close to $200 billion more than Amazon. That is insane. And yet only about $13 billion went to the bottom line because of all of their expenses. And in the future, sales are only expected to climb by about two to 3% over the next couple of years. Cause you know, again, just cause they're already so massively large. The stock is also a little expensive as it currently trades fairly close to an all time high, leaving it about 15% more expensive than the sector on a non-GAAP basis. Still, the business is solid, they are incredibly large and dominant, and they also pay a nice little dividend of a, around 1.5% with a low payout ratio and almost five decades of growth to go along with it. For that reason, I still like them more than all the stocks on today's list except for Microsoft, so I'll put them at number three for now, just just very slightly ahead of Crown Castle and UPS. Not really a stock for me as I'd rather own Amazon instead, but you know I can understand why others would want to hold it. All right, now moving on to stock number four, that's going to be another railway company known as Canadian National Railway, ticker symbol CNI, at over 7% of his portfolio and worth about $1.7 billion. And this is one of the largest railroad companies out there with a nearly 20,000 mile network connecting Canada, the US and Mexico and reaching all three coasts, those being the Pacific, the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. Now they are not to be confused with Canadian Pacific that we already looked at with Kansas City uh, Southern. Instead, Canadian National is a larger competitor that generates close to double the amount in sales at over 13 billion Canadian dollars. However, growth has been a bit of an issue with a decline in 2020 and then a rebound of around five and 6% in each of the following years. Not very exciting though, the stock is only up around 70% in the past five years. The dividend is kind of small at just around 1.6% with only one year of growth. And even the valuation is a little expensive at over 20% higher than the sector on a non-GAAP basis. I'd rank this one about the same as Canadian Pacific, except that National has a higher dividend. So I'll just put them slightly higher at number seven and move Pacific down one spot to number eight. 
All right, guys, that now brings us into the final three stocks, the top three largest. And coming in at number three, that's going to be Caterpillar, ticker symbol CAT, at over 8% of his portfolio and worth over $1.8 billion. And I've actually always liked Caterpillar. They're the largest construction equipment manufacturer in the entire world with a very strong brand that is well recognized in the construction and manufacturing industries. And they also pay a very nice dividend that yields about 2% and has been grown for almost three decades in a row. The problem with Caterpillar though is that they tend to be very cyclical because they're so heavily reliant on the macro economy and how much the world is spending on construction and infrastructure and stuff like that, which in 2019, they were already struggling with a 2% drop in sales. And that only got worse with the 2020 recession where sales plummeted by another 22% and are only now expected to recover by 20% this year, but that still leaves them doing less in sales than even a few years ago. Plus, the macro economy is an absolute mess right now, and yet the stock is still trading right near an all-time high. So normally, I do like Caterpillar, especially in the downturns when the stock price is really low and the dividend climbs up to like over a 3% or even 4% yield, which actually happens more often than you might think. But right now, with the dividend lower than 2% and the stock as high as it is, I just don't think it's as attractive as it normally would be. So I'm actually going to put them right behind UPS at number six and move a couple other stocks lower to fit them in. All right, moving into the top two now, stock number two is going to be waste management, ticker symbol WM, which is the first stock on the list to make up over 10% of his portfolio at 12% and worth over $2.7 billion. Now, I'd be very surprised if you guys haven't heard of this company as they're usually the ones that handle most of your garbage, at least here in the United States, where they lead the market by both revenue as well as landfill volume only behind municipalities, which is basically just local government. And that leadership has mostly helped them achieve strong financials. 2020 was a down year because of the recession and lockdowns, but 2021 and 2022 are both pretty large recoveries at 18% and 7% respectively, which also helped the stock recover as well, sending it pretty close to an all-time high. My guess though is that those growth rates are likely going to fall back down to maybe like 5% or so in the future, just because they're already so large, they have so much market share, and they tend to rely on small acquisitions for growth rather than anything organic. On top of that, the valuation is pretty high. I mean, you're you're just not gonna find any value here with most metrics more than 50% higher than the sector. And while their dividend has at least been grown for 18 years in a row, at under a 1.5% yield, it's just not high enough to attract most dividend-oriented investors either, at least not at today's high price and at today's low yield. So until the stock takes another heavy dip like it did in 2020, this stock is just too expensive for me right now. And for that reason, I'm going to put them just behind Caterpillar since Cat at least has a slightly higher dividend with similar growth. So waste management at number seven, and I'll move the rest of those down another spot to fit it in. Okay, and finally, that leaves us with the largest stock in Bill Gates' entire portfolio, and that's going to be Berkshire Hathaway, ticker symbol BRK.B, at an absolutely massive 45% of his portfolio and the only stock on the list worth over $10 billion. And as many of you guys already know, Bill Gates has long, for a long time been very close friends with Warren Buffett, who is also the longtime CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. And so it makes sense that Bill Gates would invest in it. And also because Buffett himself has actually donated many shares to the Gates Foundation as well. Anyway, Berkshire Hathaway is a giant holding company that either owns or invest in a number of different companies. I mean, I won't mention all of them here, but just a few big ones include Geico, Fruit of the Loom, several big banks, pharmaceutical companies, and even Coca-Cola and Apple. Now their performance can be a little volatile as it depends heavily on how those respective markets are performing. And as you might expect, the 2020 recession and the lockdowns really hit them hard and sent the stock crashing. But coming off of that, the stock actually skyrocketed to a new all-time high where it sits today, leaving their valuation sky high at over 100% higher than the sector on a non-GAAP basis. I tried looking for their financials and expected growth rates on several websites, but they all give extremely different numbers and honestly, a lot of them don't 
really make any sense. But the overall consensus, I would say that seemed to be that sales dropped by about 4% in 2020 and are now recovering at a rate of around 3% a year. Well, in my opinion, this is an incredibly boring company that doesn't grow by much. The stock price is really expensive and they don't even pay a dividend. A lot of people really invest in it just because of Warren Buffett as well as their gigantic cash pile of nearly $150 billion. But until I see them actually do something really meaningful or exciting with that cash, I'm just not that interested myself. And for that, you know, those kind of contrasting reasons, I'm going to put them right around the middle at number five behind UPS and move the others up a spot to fill in that blank at the number two spot. And I put Berkshire Hathaway there just because, you know, they do have a ton of cash that is kind of, uh, you know, attractive, but the rest of the negatives, I just feel kind of around the middle is where they should be. Anyway, in total, this now leaves us with Microsoft at number one, Walmart at number two, Crown Castle at number three, UPS at number four, Berkshire Hathaway at number five, Caterpillar at number six, Waste Management at number seven, Ecolab at number eight, Canadian National at number nine, and then Canadian Pacific at number 10. So what do you guys think? Personally, I feel that Bill Gates' stock portfolio is very boring. I wouldn't invest in most of his stocks. I think he's just one of those really super rich elites that doesn't really have to rely on skill in the stock market, but just because of the sheer amount of money that he has and how wealthy he is, he can just throw money at some very boring companies and still make a lot of profits from them just because of the sheer volume of money that he can throw at it. So uh, that's just my opinion. You guys obviously don't have to agree with me. In fact, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Let me know if you disagree, agree. I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of the stocks I mentioned. Let me know if you agree with my rankings. Would you change the rankings of any of these stocks? What would you move around? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.